Greetings comrades. I'm here today to do a review of another book that I'm reading for the read-along started by Leslie over at Words of a Reader that we're doing for the month of November on reading children's literature. If you do a search on hashtag readkidslit, you find some, all kinds of good videos on what we're all reading. Okay, So the book that I'm going to be reviewing today that I finished this week is called Rooftoppers by Katherine Rundell, R-U-N-D-E-L-L. -L. And the illustrations are by Terry Fan. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the physical aspect of this book. Now, I, I don't know if this book came out in hardcover or not. I obviously have the paperback edition, but I'm I kudos to the publisher for actually doing something nice. You know, and I have to admit, they tend to do things nicer, I think, sometimes with children's books than they do with adult books. <laughs> Put a little more effort into it. But they did uh, on this one, and thanks to the publisher for that, which is um, Simon & Schuster. So, start off with the cover. This background part here is a matte black. It kind of looks like a canvas, uh, and I know you're not going to be able to see it on the screen even if I hold it up close, but um, there are parts of it where um, it, it's almost like the canvas was painted black and then part of it wasn't completely covered. It was kind of scuffed off so you can see through that. And then around it, it has this wonderful border uh, with a little silver. It's embossed. It says rooftoppers on a little flag up here on top. And then the author's name in a, a square down at the bottom. I can get that so it's not too much glare. And then in that, whereas this is all matte and then that shiny silver. And then we have a gloss or a kind of semi-gloss. Uh, picture here. Let me see if I can get in a little bit closer so you can see that. It's the picture of uh, someone sitting on a rooftop in front of the full moon playing a cello. And I love it. I love the blues. I love the subtle shades of the sky and all the rooftops and things like that. And the silhouette of the figure. I think it's really well done. And on the inside they have uh, there's another kind of version of the picture here and one of the nice things that they have on the inside of these is at the beginning of each chapter heading they have one of these circular drawings uh, they look like pencil drawings to me but I'm not sure if that's what they are or not but that's what they look like and there's a different one uh, for each chapter and it relates to what goes on in that chapter and they're very nice and I like them a lot so very good illustrations. Uh, those are the only illustrations in the book. They're not otherwise throughout the book. It's just that those chapter headings. So on to the contents of the book. The book is about a young girl, Sophie, who was on a ship when and went, which sank. And she was rescued by um, a man named Charles, who was like 30, mid-30s, a bachelor, lived in England, uh, London at the time. And uh, when he rescued her, he just he just kept her. He didn't turn over to the authorities. He just knew as soon as he saw her that she was supposed to be with him. So uh, he is very, he's pretty eccentric and unconventional. And so she grows up in a fairly eccentric and unconventional way. Now, the child services people are not real thrilled with this, to say the least. But they kind of let it slide while she's a kid. Once she gets to be 12 on her 12th birthday, they decide that since he's not uh, like an actual blood relative, that he's really not qualified to raise a young woman, you know. So they're going to take Sophie away and put her in a um, in, in an orphanage. Now, about this time, they discover that it's possible that uh, Sophie's mother. Now, now Sophie has always claimed that her mother survived the wreck, although she was just a baby. But she she was one at the time when the boat sank. Uh, and and they've always she's always claimed that her mother survived the wreck, but Charles tries to tell her that there were no women that survived, but she refuses to give up. And one of the things that Charles tells her and that she repeats to herself a lot is never ignore a possible. So um, at age twelve, the authorities decide that they're going to take Sophie away. So Sophie and Charles flee to Paris. Uh, because they discover that perhaps her her mother was French, so there might be someone over there or relatives over there or something like that. So they flee to Paris, and they try to find the person who was her mother. Now they they have some difficulty in this because there were some shady dealings going on about the ship sinking, and they're kind of told to back off by the authorities, and um, and so they kind of have to do things subversively because otherwise. Since they did flee the country, he's basically he has kidnapped her in, I guess, the eyes of the law. They'll put him in jail and they'll send her back to England to go into an orphanage. 
so they're there, they're, but they're going to, he, Charles won't give up. He's going to try and figure out a way to find out more about this woman that they believe is her mother and that other people do have some memory of someone that would possibly be this person. In the meantime, Sophie, uh, at nighttime, she meets up, uh, she comes to meet up with these group of kids who uh, live in the trees and on the roofs and, and things like that, and they're called roof toppers. They're orphans but they will not go into the orphanage. They don't want to go down on street level because they'll get caught. Uh, so they live away from people. Uh, each one has their area. He, she meets this one specific uh, boy uh, named Mateo who kind of takes her under his wing, teaches her about living on the rooftop, and eventually they kind of get together to help her try and find her mom. So that's the crux of the story. Now there are two things. That, one thing, there's one little area in the book where it kind of started to drag a little bit. I thought probably could have been edited down, but it wasn't very much and it didn't last very long and it was fine. The only other negative about the book is that it's kind of graphic. There are some things about it that are a little more graphic than what I like to read, okay? Uh, I'm one of those people that, you know, holds my hand up in front of my eyes when those scenes come on on CSI and shows like that. I can't look at them. So there are some graphic details in here that I was I could have done without, but uh, but that's it. That's basically the only two knocks I have on the book, and those are both pretty much, you know, on me, not on the writing and not on the story. One of the things that I really liked about this book, I, I, I very much enjoyed, was the writing itself. And the reason why is because, and again, this is a pet peeve of mine, in this day and age where writing is taught to be invisible, this writing is not invisible. It doesn't try to hide the fact or pretend that it's not a story being told with words and with language. It, it doesn't try to hide it. It celebrates it. And I really like that. I like an author that has the courage to do that. And there, I mean, it's not constant and ongoing throughout the book. A lot of the book is just told in straightforward story uh, style. But there are, it just, it just glitters all the way through with these lovely images and stuff, um, and which I really appreciate. I love beautiful writing, and uh, I think it works really well in this book. As for the characters, uh, Charles is very eccentric, and consequently, Sophie is very eccentric. Obviously, the kids who live on the rooftops and in the trees are eccentric. They're very well drawn uh, with with not a whole lot of I mean the book is only what less than 250 pages so you know you don't get a whole lot of time to go into a whole lot of character depth and the author does a really good job of, of displaying these characters and revealing the characters it, with very little um, uh, narration or exposition or whatever it is um, so uh, that part was done really well. I mean, these characters are, are more well-drawn than some I've read in much longer books. So that I liked a lot. And they're all unique. They're very unique characters. It's a unique world. It takes place around the time... I, I think it takes place around the turn of the 20th century. In England, they're still riding in horse-drawn carriages. I know there's a mention of an automobile when they get to Paris, but... Um, I, I, I don't know when automobiles were common or were invented in Paris, so I don't know what that is, but I'm guessing late 19th, early 20th century. So that's the time frame that it takes place. So I, I say definitely give this book a try. It's, it, it's worth giving it a shot. I really enjoyed it a lot. It's a fun read. Aside from the graphic bits, <laughs> I do recommend it. So I hope you will check it out. Um, it's definitely worth the time. I, I am very glad that I read this book. Okay, so that's it for that one. I've got one more review to do, and uh, that'll be it for this week, most likely. So happy trails and happy reading.